welcome to today's Dash Cam Diary on the Field with me, chronically happy, and it's Kelly as passenger. It's hard to get us both in frame. On my way to my chiropractor appointment, and uh, you know, I'm cross between Michael Myers and uh, Jason. I'm gonna do my hair all funky, so I'm going to a paint night with my lady friends tonight. And um, the paint is set, and I'm like, why don't we dress up with whatever you got? It don't got to it don't got to be anything fancy. Just dress up with what you got and uh, don't go all out. Just be comfortable. We're going to be painting. <laughs> We're going to be painting the moon. Uh, it was supposed to be uh, my, my, uh, almost all my friends named Jennifer. Two of them ended up not being able to go. So there's only two Jennifers, me and a Melody that's going Skelly in my passenger seat for another two days until November 1st. So Skelly's going to ride around with me. I am going to be uh, headed to my storage unit right after uh, my doctor appointments this morning and uh, dropping off all my totes that I've gone over the last two days at my house. Well, one day. I was completely wiped out on Sunday. Sunday, I could not do anything. I was in bed all day. I could not function. I posted my fatigue video that day, and that's what it was like all day that day. I couldn't do anything. My body was, it felt like it weighed like 100 plus pounds in just my arms. I was so fatigued, and there was nothing I could do about it, like besides just rest. I slept all day. I woke up for a few hours in the evening and watch some TV, interacting with my parents a little bit, and then uh, went right back to bed. I had an ultrasound first thing yesterday morning uh, of my liver, so when I fell two weeks ago and twisted my body, uh, I had some blood work done like five days after the fall, and my liver enzymes were elevated, so I'm like, huh, I haven't changed anything. So, I don't know why my liver, you know, I looked up online that you could potentially injure your liver in a fall. So, I'm like, just to be on the safe side with my weird connective tissue, let's just err on the, you know, caution. I, I have been having abdominal pain, so they just went ahead and did an uh, ultrasound of all my organs, my kidneys, gallbladder, spleen, liver, they, they looked at it all. Uh, test results came back last night, the report, everything is perfect, so I'm super happy about that, but now it makes me concerned about the medications that I'm on. There's some of my, you know, and I'm about to start some other medications, so, including chemotherapy medication. Um, so it, my autoimmune diseases have gotten that bad that it's going to take chemotherapy to calm down my immune system to prevent cancer. Uh, I'm on the verge of some kind of cancer with all the problems that I have with my disease processes. This is the only thing I can do to slow it down is get on chemotherapy drugs. Otherwise, I will start having I already have abnormal growths right now. There are only cysts and uh, you know, benign tumors or whatever. I'm watching all of them carefully. Um, this is one of those things. Uh, I'm to the point in my life uh, with all my unique set of complex medical issues. Uh, I've got to be wary. I've got to advocate for myself. I have to be the one to be concerned. Um, even though my doctors are not. I... I don't care if they think that I'm a hypochondriac or not. I don't care what anybody thinks. I want to be sure I catch it and I catch whatever goes wrong early. And so I'm not going to ignore my symptoms. Only certain symptoms. 
<laughs> because I have a new set of normal symptoms all the time. Things are always changing. And I never know if it's for the better or for the worse. So I, I would rather check than not check and then kick myself in the butt if I miss cancer and one of my organs because of all my autoimmune diseases. Having an autoimmune disease increases your chance of cancer significantly, especially if you have more than one. And usually if you have one autoimmune disease, you have more or develop more. That means your immune system is on overdrive and so you have to take medication to suppress your immune system. And there's already parts of my immune system that do not respond to the uh, pneumonia vaccine. Um, it's a certain type of bacteria and coated, uh, coated cells that enter the body. So my body doesn't fight against them. I've learned this. It's called an IgG subclass 2 deficiency. Um, it has to do with polysaccharides uh, coated cells, bacterial cells. And so my body does not recognize it no matter what. And so it's like catching that infection brand new every time. And it could kill me because I am on suppressed medication for my immune system. So not just one part. You know, I'm trying to slow down parts of my immune system and not all of them are targeted as easily. They still don't know the mechanisms of what causes them. Um, I actually did a little bit of research about a Zempic yesterday. Gosh, I'm getting tired, uh, thirsty. Uh, dry mouth here. Uh, I did some research on Ozempic yesterday and uh, it works on the GLP-1 uh, polys... Uh, I, admit, I know I'm going to mess up a word. It's a uh, uh, polysaccharide on my mind because that's my problem. <laughs> basically the greater Portland area. So, it's just, it just really irks me that they're so short-staffed and they're uh, 
departments are, you know, the, the workers have been laid off because that's what we need more of. But in order to obtain those larger hospital systems, they, that's a lot of freaking money movement. So there's a lot of money moving around and a lot of companies find other companies and they don't need the space. They're expanding their campus so much more already. Just, they just finished a parking, beautiful parking garage, all fancy and yeah. They're trying to line their own pocket pisses me off because they're not in it for helping and researching medical issues. They're in it for the money and closing out competition and then they just don't have much staff because they made all those buyouts. So anyways, I'm going to get off my high horse on that. I, you know, it just pisses me off. Um, and I got to get a drink of water. <laughs> I'm so thirsty. <laughs> I put this mask back on though. show up to my chiropractor like looking like this. My hair is all messed up again. Uh. There. It almost fits perfect on my face too. Uh, it really doesn't like press too bad in places. This thing glows in the dark too. Now am I going to be painting with this on tonight? Probably for a very limited amount of time. <laughs> I'm super stoked. Uh, I like to dress up. I like Halloween. I loved Halloween. You know, I would I would cosplay all month long when I was in college. Uh, after I got discharged from the Navy, you know, I did everything backwards. I did the college after the Navy. After I served nine years and got disabled, and at the age of 28, got let go at the age of 30. They tried for two years trying to fix me, and they couldn't. Because they didn't know about EDS, and so now that they, now that I know about EDS, I know how to get the right treatment. And the wrong treatment can hurt me more, and it did hurt me more. And I tried telling them that, but they didn't listen, and I just did what I was told to do. And none of it worked. None of it worked. Not until we found out I had celiac disease, which I was complaining about for months. Going to the ER after having pizza and beer. That always killed my gut. It was always after pizza and drinking beer. And so I, I wished I knew about celiac disease then. Because then I could have had them look for it. But it wasn't until after I got out of the military and got uh, into a car accident riding in my mom's car. She got rear-ended and it really messed me up again. Like, it really messed me up. going off 
States be knowing that my friend is suicidal. A trigger warning, I'm going to have to put a trigger warning on my title description. That does. My friend is in a tough boat. I don't think she's in immediate danger of dying, but you know, if you have that fear and if you are suicidal, it would be easy for you to let go and not have opportunity if you are close to needing to be on hospice type stuff. Uh, I didn't think I need to have this emotional warning, but it is. Uh, I care about my friend. I don't know what I can do to help her, so I'm going to start sending her memes. I'm going to start trying to make her laugh. Because I think that's what she needs right now. Empathy can take you so far that when it's so, you know, one of the things about being chronically ill and sick, you don't want to bring others down with you. You don't want them to feel sad and upset for them. They want, they just want somebody to listen. But, you know, I've learned that being empathetic and being like, I'm really sorry about this. I, you know, I, it leaves me speechless sometimes. I just don't know what to say. And now I know how my mom feels because she doesn't know what to say either sometimes or what I have to say. So I kind of understand that. I kind of get it. I kind of get it now, Mom. That is that, that's a beautiful sunrise. Oh my God. It's so beautiful. I hope this is going to be a red light so I can turn the camera around. So, oh my gosh, that's beautiful. I want to show this on camera. Light, but Look at this beauty. This is why I'm thankful. This is why I'm fighting so hard for myself and for others. <sighs> I'm gonna see what I can do for my friend. I just I I was so exhausted last night. I just didn't. I was speechless with what was going on with her situation. Gosh, it's beautiful over here too. It's so pink and beautiful. But I'm, I'm ADHD at its finest. <laughs> uh, but I'm so thankful for life, and there's so much to live for, even in all this distress and, and frustration and pain. And she's fighting for her life. Okay, she's fighting for her life because she needs. Her body's not absorbing. And I 100% think that it's because my, my dash thing is making so much noise. Um, she needs to get untethered. Once she's detethered, I think she'll start absorbing things. I think that's what's going to happen. I think she's just so this far out of alignment that is blocking things off. She's not absorbing what she needs to. And so she's to the point where the immunologist agrees that she needs to have what's called TPN and it's basically tube fed, tube feeding. She's locked, she's down to 80 pounds. This girl is so skinny and she used to be my size. I didn't know her when she was my size, but this girl needs to put on weight. She is sticking, sticking bones. Um, and she does eat. It's not just like an eating try and be there for her. I want to, I want to try and, I'm not trying to solve her problems, but I want to be there for her. I want to help her. Maybe I can get us a hotel room for the night. I did just get paid and I hate wasting the money. I really can't afford to waste the money on this, but I want to see her have a place to stay. She thought about just, just staying in her car overnight in front of the hospital and that's not a way to go. I want to be there for her and drive her. I'm going to see if I may be staying the night tonight. I got to look at my appointment 
my schedule and <laughs> maybe I can go up there tonight after the paint night with my girlfriends and I can take her. I think that's what I'm going to have to do. Until future notice, <laughs> chronically happy out. I'm at my chiropractor appointment on time, mother trucker, on time. Oh my god, 10 minutes early. They're gonna be like, their jaws are gonna drop, man. <laughs> and they're gonna love seeing the costume, so. Anyways, chronically happy out.